I, I think most people, if you dig really, really, really deep into, into what do they want, they just want freedom. And, and when you have that freedom, when you're not locked in a phone booth, you're happier. You, you get to be yourself. Like your level of fulfillment is, and satisfaction is good. It all boils down to freedom. It's what we want. And it's the thing that salespeople rebel against the most. We hate universally top performers, freaking everybody. Do not micromanage me. Welcome to the Rising Leader Podcast, bringing forth the new wave of rising leadership and helping leaders find purpose, connection, and results. This is your host, founder of Alluviance, Alex Kremer. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Rising Leader Podcast. If this is your first time hopping in and joining us on the show, we welcome you. If, if we are virtually giving you a very wonderful hug, of gratitude for being here with us. I am stoked about today's conversation. We have the wonderful and the infamous Mr. Scott Ingram. So first off, Scott, what is up, dude? Good to see you. Yeah, likewise. Looking forward to having a, a great conversation. So Scott, I, 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 I knew of you through LinkedIn for a good amount of time, but it wasn't until uh, we were at Ian Koniak's immersion a month or two or three ago, something along those lines, we were both speaking at it. And I just heard you kind of share your story and, and where you're at. And I was just like, all right, I, I like this guy. <laughs> I like what he's speaking about here. I'm glad it resonated. Well, well, we'll see if we can do that for the folks listening today, right? I'm in. I'm in for it, man. Um, well, let me just kind of give a, a little bit of a background intro on you. I'll let you fill in the gaps too of where I might have missed just for those who don't no, so you are first off the founder of Sales Success Media. Um, you run the Sales Success Summit where over 100 top reps have joined. Um, you've uh, written the book, Sales Success Stories, 60 stories from t uh, uh, 20 uh, top 1% sales professionals, which is hilarious because back in 2020, it was like I remember during covid I heard you and Scott Barker on a podcast and I just downloaded the book without like knowing. And it wasn't until like, I was like prepping for this interview. I was like, I've read his book <laughs> before, <laughs> which is, uh, which is so awesome. And besides that, you, um, got two podcasts, the sales success stories podcast, and then the daily sales tips podcast. Uh, and beyond that, man, you are an account director at relationship one. So you were just doing a whole bunch of good, shit in this world for the sales community, for sales professionals, and for sales leaders out there. So I guess, let me let me ask, how was that? How was that intro? What did I miss? Is there any cool, weird, unique facts too that you feel called for people to know about you? Nice. Lots, lots of good stuff in that. Well, we're both in Austin. So uh, great, great place to be. I am coming up on 20 years here. So continuing to watch this place explode, which is a, which is a ton of fun. Um, I'm married. I've got two daughters who impossibly are uh, getting towards the latter part of, of their high school careers, which is insane. Uh, so if you have young children, please don't blink. Um, they grow up very, very quickly. Uh, and then, I, you know, I, I think just contextually for this, you know, obviously I've got this giant side hustle with Sales Success Media and the podcasts and the events and all the stuff that we do there. Uh, but during the day, I'm a I'm a quota carrying sales professional, and I consider myself. I think I actually coined this term. Uh, I consider myself to be an intentional individual contributor. So I'm in this mm -hmm. role. I don't lead a team uh, on purpose because I mentioned I already have children, right? Um, and and so I think hopefully that perspective is is interesting and valuable. Uh, it, it's actually opened some doors for some folks who realized, you know what, leadership is not what I want, right? It, it, and I think we, we end up down sometimes these default paths, right? And we're like, oh, well, that's the next step I'm supposed to take. Like I'm supposed to become a manager and then I'm a manager and I'm supposed to become a director. Well, it, is it really? Is, is that really what you're, you're meant to do? And, and the way that I think about what I do, I lead from the field. So I don't need the title. I don't need to have people reporting to me, uh, but I absolutely uh, am a leader in in my day to day roles. Mm. I mean, that is not easy to do. I love I love how you speak to you are a leader with or without the title. And there's a lot of people. There's like a blueprint of 
what we're supposed to do in this world, especially if you're in tech. It's like, you know, you start off your career if you're an SDR and then you move up to an AE and then you move to a manager, director, VP, CRO, and just like, it's a safe path. And there's the achiever in us that says, okay, I'm always trying to make more money. There's always another quota to get. There's always the next promotion to get. And it's just like, boom, boom. It's just like, you're just following along this sort of thing. But, you know, it's, it's really refreshing to hear that, hey, I'm still a leader, even if I don't go the path. And, and I'll just share, it's like, in my personal, you know, sales career, the most impactful leaders or coaches that I've had were fellow reps who just taught me how to do everything that I was actually doing. Yeah, that I mean, that's it. And, and that's where all of the all of the content I put out really came from. Because I, I was only interested in, I didn't want to hear from the consultants and the gurus who haven't carried a quota in, I don't know, like decades. I want to hear from people who are at the top of their game right now. Because like you, that's where I've always learned the the most from. And I, I think if we take the pessimistic view, you've probably heard the line that that we get promoted to our, our highest level of incompetence. You know, you sort of end up in this role where you suck. I really think I, I'm at my highest level of competence, right? I'm in a role that I'm great at. And, um, you know, selfishly, I, I control my schedule, right? Like mm -hmm. I have a lot of control. I have a lot of freedom and it allows me to do all of this other stuff that, that gets me excited that I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. You know what I've, I've found, you know, I'm, I'm speaking with tech sales professionals and leaders, just tons and tons every single day, especially as part of the community and, and all that sort of stuff. And the most common thing that I'm hearing that I didn't used to hear is when I ask them, what's your vision? What's your three-year vision? Nobody, or at least very few people are saying, I want to be a VP or I want to be a CRO. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it used to be such the common answer of, I just want to move up. But more and more people are saying like, yeah, like I definitely don't want to be doing what I'm doing now or staying kind of in this. And it's just, it's this weird, we're at this such a unique inflection point where what you're speaking to right now is becoming a lot more common because- I think at the end of the day, what people are placing more importance on than ever before is, yeah, sure, they want to make a shit ton of money. Who doesn't want to do that? But they're actually saying, but I actually, I want my health, I want my quality of life, I want my work-life balance to be really good. And that, if I have to sacrifice some money for that, I'll do that. Yeah. I mean, it, it comes down to the intentionality. Like, why are you doing this? Or why do you want to do that, right? What, what sort of a progression do you ultimately want to be on? And where are you going to get the, the most fulfillment? And where are you going to get the, the ability to focus on the things that are most important to you, right? Like my, my highest priority is always my health, right? Because without that, if, if I don't have my health, everything else comes crashing down, right? So that's one of the things that I need to be able to prioritize and I enjoy it, right? I, I, I love working out and, and doing the things that, that I do. Mm. So you have interviewed thousands of top reps within- Well, not thousands. Let's, let's go hundreds. I specifically remember <laughs> you saying thousands. All right. You've interviewed a lot of top reps and- you yourself are a top rep. You've written a book on top reps. You have a podcast on top reps. It's like you, you, one can say you are fascinated and extremely curious as to what makes a top rep a top rep. And, and I also want to you know, share for anybody who's listening who's not a rep per se, just input you know, leader or whatever you know, individual contributor you want to within there. What I'm curious about is what does it actually take to become a top rep, what when you start to see kind of the through line, the commonality as you're speaking to these people, what are you really seeing of these people? Yeah, let's let's do just one additional piece of of contextualizing here. Uh, so on the Sales Success Stories podcast, I only interview active quota carrying individual contributors who are either the number one top performer in their company, or I'm willing to settle for the top one percent. And every now and then, I'll talk to somebody that's you know number four on a team of 800 at Microsoft or, or whatever it is, right? So that's that's the bar. Um, I've been doing these interviews now for uh, north of, of seven years. And, you know, the 
the way that I like to boil down what it is, because there's, there aren't a lot of, there, well, number one, there's no magic bullets, right? If, if you were looking for like, oh, what's the secret? Like, what's that one thing that the top performers do that they figured out that nobody else has figured out? That's not a thing. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's some table stakes things like it, it just takes hard work, right? Like the, the, there, there is no easy button. There is no, I had hoped, and I, I've never found this. I had hoped I would find somebody who was so strategic, so like technology enabled that they had found some magical way to do what they do. Nope, not a thing. So you're going to have to work really hard. Right. Mm. But I think the first thing, it's a decision. Mm. You have to decide, I'm going to be great at this. I'm going to be the best at this in my organization. And, and what's funny for me is one of my favorite things uh, that, that has happened a lot of times now is I will have super fans of the podcast. They listen to tons of episodes. They then reach out to me and they say, Scott, I'm going to be on your show. When that happens, when I get like those Babe Ruth moments where they call their shot and they point, the the, the achievement rate on that is really, really high. Mm. So it starts there. But ultimately, like for me, I think it boils down to belief in, in three things. Y you have to believe in what you sell. You know, one, one of the things... Um, all of these conversations have been so stereotype smashing for me um, because, I mean, I'd been in sales for uh, a decade or more before I even started this show. And I thought I knew some of the things that, that made top performers. And a lot of them were wrong. And, and one of those things was I thought it's all about them, right? It's all about the ego, it's its a very selfish thing, right? They'll do whatever they need to do to anybody. They'll run over their mother if it means they're going to get a, a deal and be number one. It That could not be further from the truth, <laughs> right? Other than, I will qualify this, there could be some selection bias here because it's possible that those assholes um, won't come on my show because I will expose them. Mm. And so maybe they know, no, I'm a selfish prick and I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to talk about this because all I care about is me. Why would I share my story and try to help other people? Um, so maybe there's some selection bias in this, but I've talked to a lot of top performers and they tend to be very humble and they are servant leaders. It is all about helping their customers be successful. And by doing that, all of the numbers and the results and the W-2s and the leaderboard and all that stuff takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. So that brings us back to this belief thing and believing in what you sell. If you don't believe in what you sell, you can't serve your customers. You can't be an upstanding, decent person. So you have to believe in what you're selling. And to some degree, I think you also have to believe and trust in the organization you sell for, right? Do, do the, does the leadership care about you, right? Do you have a, a manager that's going to support you? Because it's very, very, very rare that you get to that number one spot despite your leader. This is way too hard to do in and of itself to also be overcoming a horrible leader in the process, mm. right? So you need a partner in this. You need somebody that's going to be able to help you get this done. So you believe in your product. You, you believe in your organization. You have to believe in yourself. This is that calling in your shot moment. You have to believe that I can be the, the best and I believe that I'm capable. And then you have to believe in your process, Right, mm. whatever that is. Now, here's the thing, and I think this, um, especially for sales leaders who are listening to this, this I think is the most important thing. Having done all of these interviews and and the range of introversion to extroversion and all of these things is is so broad, it would blow your mind. Ultimately, what it comes down to 
is the best of the best have figured out how to be the best versions of them. <laughs> and, and so in order to do that, they need the freedom and the space to be themselves, right? So, so it's, it's a fine line of, of making sure that we're not constraining people too much. Process is important. Don't get me wrong, but it has to fit. It has to work for, for that person. I've, I've been joking here recently that because I've had this kind of leader before, I, I won't call it the leader is I've had this kind of manager. Leader is the wrong kind of word for this type of individual where they wanted me to do it their way. They're like, well, you need to go to the customer and you need to say this and you need to do this. I'm like, but that's not me. That will work for you. That will work coming out of your mouth with your style and the way that you operate. That won't work for me. I think of it like asking me to show up to a sales call and insisting that I wear a size three dress. That is not going to be pretty. <laughs> it is just not going to work. What I need is a 42 regular coat. <laughs> that is going to work. And I'm going to wear some jeans with it. Right. So uh, you, you have to, as a leader, you have to allow people a space to find that superpower. And, and if you're trying to become great, you really have to lean into those things that are your own superpowers. And, and what's maybe not obvious about those is a lot of times those are the things that come really easy to you. So mm -hmm. while you have to work at this, sometimes your superpower is something that you're like, this is so automatic for me, right? So the, the trick is discovering those things and really leaning into those things because they make all the difference. Mm. Okay, real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to stop this. Um, th I, I love that, huh? No, no. <laughs> All right. First off, Scott, the image of you in a size three skirt is terrifying. I much prefer you in the 42 regular. And by the way, we have the same body type because I also wear a 42 regular. So I resonate with that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my question. I'm going to play a devil's advocate here as, as a sales leader. Um, because, I, you know, I've, I've hired, coached or trained or managed, you know, over 150 reps at this point. And I love what you say is like, I want you to be in your genius. I want you to be the truest version of yourself and, and allow that to happen. Yet at the same time, if I'm leading a team or I'm leading multiple teams and we're trying to scale an organization, like in 2018, I was, when I was at outreach, my first time manager role, we were scaling. Like I was hiring five new people a month and, and, and turning them into sales professionals. So how do we find how do you find the fine line between giving people their freedom to do that while also being like but you got to sound like this to a point yeah i mean and that is the challenge right and it's easier for me to say as an individual contributor when i don't have a, a lot of people here here's the thing here i'm going to give two sides of this right like i i think the the one side is, and what drives me crazy is what I see as lazy leadership and lazy management, which is kind of this, I'm trying to put everybody in the same box and I want to measure everybody the same way. And uh, in, in the pursuit of scale, that's the story we tell ourselves, like I need to be able to do that in order to stack all of these blocks and build this big thing that I'm trying to build. <laughs> okay. Um, but we lose the humanity in that, right? Again, if the, the superpower is really about the human and sales is much more about the human than it is the, the numbers, right? So the, the flip side is, and, and here's, here's the nuance, right? So to be fair, it's very rare that I interview people who get to the top of the game, like immediately, like they blink and they're just so full of natural talent that, that they end up there. Usually this is something that you work at for, for a while, right? Before you kind of climb those, those ranks. And I think of it kind of like, think of it as, as musical improvisation. Right. You don't just walk into a jazz club and you just solo and you improvise your your brains out. That's that's not how it works. Like first you learn to read the music. 
And then over time, you get to incorporate like your own personality, your own style, your own feel. And, and I mean, you know, we've, we've all watched these shows with the musical performers. Like when people get great at that, it's when they find themselves, right? When they find like, I found my sound, right? So I, I think the happy medium there is, because I think at the end of the day, both points are correct. Right. We, we can't we can't run a sales organization of nothing but jazz musicians like that is going to be a cacophony of awfulness. So we have to kind of figure out, like, what are the core non-negotiables? Mm. Like, what do we have to have documented in CRM? <laughs> right. What meetings do you have to go to? <laughs> right. There, there are some fundamental things that we're going to have to kind of establish. But. If you're willing to do the work and be a great leader and help people discover their superpowers, it will blow your mind, right? And, and it's kind of like, imagine if you have this sales team and recognizing that there are one or more people with superhero potential. And if you could just give them a cape, they can fly. Mm. Why mm. wouldn't you want that person to fly? Or are you going to leave them locked in the phone booth? So it's finding that happy medium, right? It's like, well, you, you still have to go into the phone booth because you have to put on your, your cape, right? You, you still have to do that core, fundamental, foundational work. Clark Kent has never flown. <laughs> we got to put on the cape, right? That's the, the core. But then let them be free right? Let them be themselves. Let them share those ideas and cross pollinate and inspire each other to greater heights, right? Because because what's better than one superhero? Like the Avengers. What if you had a mm. whole team of them? Mm. I feel like what you're speaking to is actually the core problem that is happening, not just in the corporate world, but like in society mm. is we've got this cookie cutter type of model. I mean, we're, we're indoctrinated since we're children, go to school and then go to college and then get a job and behave a certain type of way, you know, in sales, you know, hit quota and get a promotion, hit quota, get a promotion. Like, yep. you know, it's just like, and even goes to family, get a white picket fence, have a family. You know, it's like all this stuff of just like, we're required to live within this realm, this, this world be this way. And for society, you know, it's really safe. You're going to be exactly perfect that we can manage you yeah. and all this sort of stuff. And what you're saying is like, sure, there's value in that. Yes, I, I see, especially to be able to scale, you know, but in my opinion, the times when I, when I speak with people who I'm coaching and I see the people who are really down or they're depressed or they're, just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what's on me right now? It's the people who are trying to fit into this box. And again, they're fucking Clark Kent. Yeah. <laughs> they got a cape <laughs> under this suit. Yep. And either they know it or they don't know it, but they don't feel like they can have the ability to let their freak flag, weirdness, uniqueness, strength, superpower out. And that's... That's, that's, that's it. At, at, the, at the end of the day, here, here's the thing. I think it all boils down to freedom. I, I think most people, if you dig really, really, really deep into, into what do they want, they just want freedom. And, and when you have that freedom, when you're not locked in a phone booth, you're happier. You, you mm. get to be yourself, like your level of fulfillment is, and satisfaction is good. I work for one of these kinds of organizations. There's a reason I have worked for the same company for eight years. I mean, that doesn't happen. It never happened in my career before that, but it, it happens now because I have that freedom. And I get to do the other stuff I want to do. And I don't get, I don't get like pushback because of that. And what's the other result? I perform at a much higher level. Mm. So everybody wins. Every, everybody wins. I, I think it's, it's one of those 
like counterintuitive things. We think, well, you know what, if we repress everybody and we stick them in their boxes, it'll be much easier to manage the boxes. But you know what, that doesn't really work because now everybody's rebelling. And they're like trying to tip over the box and they're trying to escape from the box. And if you had just let them be free in the first place, maybe, I I don't know. I mean, maybe we're torturing this analogy to death, but I I think to me, it all boils down to freedom. It's what we want. And it's the thing that salespeople rebel against the most. We hate universally top performers, freaking everybody. Do not micromanage me. Do not get this granular with me. Let me do my thing. If you will move, I will do my thing. The most miserable I was in my sales career, I was working for a a large Fortune 500 company with a huge sales team in 2008, right? So we hit a recession. This company was infamous. They did 40 quarters of double-digit growth. Wow. Public company, 40 quarters. And so what is their planning process? Take last year's number, add two digits to it, and roll that down. It got to a point that I was spending 30 to 40% of my time documenting what I was spending my time doing yeah. because there were eight people between me and that CEO and the the missing of the numbers and the pressure just kept rolling downhill till it all landed on me. And I had mm. to document all this stuff. And I'm like, look, if you would just let me do my thing, like maybe or maybe I won't get to a hundred or 110%, but it'll be better than this. And we're both going to be happier because I hate this and you're not getting the results you want. <laughs> So mm-hmm. it, 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 it's this fundamental freedom thing. Like who knew this is the punchline where we were going to land today, but, but there's something here, I think. Freedom. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, why I actually really like this is because when you look at what's happening today, I'm not, I'm not going to even, I'm not going to take this political or anything like that, but let, let's just bring it that, you know, a corporation is a microcosm for what's happening at a much larger scale. But when you look at, corporations today, and let's specifically focus on tech sales corporations. So many of them are fucked up right now. (laughs) Like genuinely, you know, when I am speaking with sales professionals and sales leaders every single day, so many people are like, man, what the hell? They're burnt out. They're feeling isolated. What used to hit so good in 2018, 2019, doesn't have the sizzle or the pop that it used to. And we're in such a crazy, unique time right now because at the end of the day, corporations are still very important. Like they, they provide commerce, they provide you know, you know, value, innovation, all this sort of stuff. So learning how to build a corporation and have people who are at a level of embodiment leading them is really important because if all the people who end up finding their true expression and and want to step into freedom end up leaving and starting their own thing who's left to be leading these companies especially with all the money and all the lobbying and all that sort of stuff that they have this is like the key thing it's like companies need to figure out how to let people feel a greater sense of freedom or a greater sense of show your cape. Like, let that out more. And yes, I'm here to make sure you can make a lot of money and make a shit ton of money because that's important for sure. I, I want that in my life. There's no doubt. It provides wonderful opportunities, especially if you give back and all that sort of stuff. But actually, what I'm wanting now more than ever is to be the truest expression of myself and to figure out what is the uniqueness of me that wants to come out. And if companies can't figure out how to allow people to do that and create a safe space to do that, I, I just don't think it's, it's scary to think with how much innovation, especially with AI that's happening. It's like, wow, we're really doing some good ass shit here. But if the people at the top or the people at these companies or the people selling the product aren't feeling 
the hmm, this is feels good to me. My heart's good, feeling good at this. I, I'm terrified. Yeah. Of what actually ends up happening there. I, I mean, I'm going to take this in a little bit of a different direction from from the freedom thing. Although, who knows? Maybe it'll maybe it'll come back around. I I think I think this also is kind of a a truth and trust kind of dynamic. And and I'm going to step up on a whole different soapbox here, because I I think the the first thing that you have to do. I mean, the reason we're seeing everything go so sideways starts with just a misalignment of expectations. Like we've not acknowledged the reality that, hey, you know, the the economy and the market changed. And so we're not going to we're not going to double every year like we were. And, and we have to react to that. And I think that reaction has been really slow. And again, it's the same type of thing, like the pressure is mounting and maybe that pressure is coming from VCs or, or the board or wherever it is. Right. And that's rolling downhill. Um, but at the rep level, and let's talk about quota specifically, right? What I think really has to happen is you have to acknowledge the reality. You have to be open and transparent about where things are and what's going on. And sometimes we have to reset the expectations. That's what you do as an executive team or at the board level. Right. If the if the marketplace dynamic has changed, you're going to reset those expectations with the board, with your investors, what have you. Why don't we take that same approach with sellers? And and here's here's my issue with quota. And, and a lot of this, uh, you know, got out there publicly. And I, I think a lot of it kind of stems from this like ivory tower VC kind of concept. There's this idea that if more than 70% of your sellers are making their number, then your number is too low. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> but but here's what I've heard, happens. I've heard that stat before. Yep. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and again, it's what, what happens though to the psychology. Let's think about the individual, right? If I as an individual seller, I'm at 90% of my number. The reality is I'm well above what you expected of me. The problem is winners are going to win and losers are going to lose. And I feel like a loser because mm. I'm not making my number. Right. And so part of the solution here is you have to disconnect quota from commission compensation and commission, right? Those, those can be two different things, but most reps don't understand. They think that, well, quota is my job. If I'm not doing 100%, I'm not doing my job and I might be fired. When a lot of times, again, that's just not the reality. And how many organizations, I mean, shoot, we're at a place right now where the data says, man, if 70% of your team is making your number, you're killing it. <laughs> Their numbers are a lot worse than those 70% numbers. So you've got an entire group of people who feel bad, who feel maybe undue pressure that they don't need to be feeling. And when you're selling, the way that you sell, your mindset, your level of confidence is different. I, I, I haven't figured out a way to hack this, even though I know this is true. I, well, I'm gonna make this personal. I am a different seller when I'm ahead of my numbers than when I'm behind my numbers. One of those sellers is much better than the other one, right? Well, why wouldn't we want more of our sellers feeling that way? Like they're, mm -hmm. they're doing the right things. They are winning. They can be confident and do the right things. And the, mm -hmm. the ripple effects of that are so massive. Right. Because if I'm doing dumb, unnatural things, I'm writing bad business that's going to churn, that's going to be way more work for my delivery team to execute. I mean, it, it's a it's a mess. It's a shit yeah. show if I sell bad business because I'm desperate. Whereas when I sell good business because I'm confident and I'm feeling good, my margins are higher. My customers are happier. They're renewing. They're buying more. They're referring us. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, such a, it's such a positive cycle that you can get into, but we've put so much pressure on people and pushed them into these downward spirals that, yeah, no wonder business is a mess right now.
when you look at the value of doing that, the value of making it so, you know, only 50% of your team should be hitting quota. That's probably the sweet spot, right? Or whatever that number is. And it's like, from a VC perspective, it's like, we're going to push these people just a little bit beyond their capacity and squeeze everything we can out of them. And then when they're dry, we'll toss them. We'll move them on to the next. So it's very much like a, a short term gain. But what it's also doing, you spoke to it very well. It's like, not only are you closing bad business in order to be able to hit that, just Scott and Alex, when they're hitting quota in all areas of their life, is better. You know, I'm better with my relationships, I'm better just what I'm eating. I'm better in going to socialize, socialize with like all this sort of stuff that, and I end up putting out a good vibration to it. Yeah. And especially for salespeople who are very achievement oriented, who very often care what people think about them, who want to see their name up on the leaderboard, want to be number one, right? Can even be people pleasers. If, if we take it that far, like that's, there's a positive purpose to being a people pleaser. It helps you be a diplomat, helps you connect with people. But when we're telling them, Hey, you're actually not good enough. That becomes a sickness. And then that, even if you were able to squeak out a little bit more money because certain reps worked a little bit harder or pushed themselves further from a long-term thing, we're creating a systematic problem within these corporations, within this like how salespeople are, are talking about. So it's like, mm, like what you're speaking to. Yeah. I, and that holistic thing I think is so important, right? Like if you look at the sales human, it's just not, who they are and what they do in those eight or 10 or 12 hours a day that they're working for you, their life comes through. What's you're reminding me, one of, one of the first sales success summits, uh, somebody sort of observed, they're like, wow, like these people, they're not drinking that much. They're eating pretty healthy. They're going to bed pretty early. Like, wow, this is not what I would have expected. Again, more stereotypes being smashed. This is not what I would have expected. Well, imagine those things like, hey, I'm, I'm ahead of my numbers. I'm feeling good. I feel confident. I believe in my product. I believe that I'm serving my customers. I feel good. I'm getting good sleep. I'm working out. My relationships are, are strong and healthy and, and I'm happy. Like life is good versus... I'm behind my numbers. I'm stressed. I'm losing sleep. I feel like I don't have time to work out. I'm drinking. Like, again, it's, are we putting people in a, in a downward spiral or are we giving them, them an opportunity to climb a ladder and, and have everything get better in their life? Mm. I mean, it gets me excited that we're at least starting to have these types of conversations. And I do think that more organizations are starting to take into consideration at least this idea. Like when 2020 happened and there was this big craze around mental health, like it became a thing. And and that was wonderful. I mean, was it at the level that we needed it to be? No, but that's that's okay because we just weren't at that level of development yet. But, you know, what organizations try to do is throw hey, here's a free subscription to the Calm app or Headspace, you know, or, you know, here's the five things that you need to do in order to, you know, create more space on your calendar, you know, all these different types of things. And there, there's a, there's a genuineness that's, that's from it, but it, it was like, try, like if you got weeds, like they're just trying to like trim the weeds versus actually going to the root of it and actually getting that thing. Yep. Yep. Well, okay. So, so let's tie that idea to leadership and, and let's also tie it to the way that we sell and, and the types of engagements that we're having. Right. So the lazy leadership approach is management by the numbers, right? So mm-hmm. Alex, we're going to have this one-on-one and I'm going to go through your numbers and I'm going to go through your deals and I'm going to go through your pipeline. Like, okay, how impactful is, is that really going to be? Is that really going to move the needle versus 
Do I take this holistic approach? Do I look at Alex as a whole human? Am I curious and interested in you? in what's going on in your life. Like, are you getting sleep? Are you getting your workouts in, right? Like, how's your head? How's your wife? How, you know, just how, how is all of that stuff and getting beyond the numbers? That's powerful. It's also powerful in our customer engagements. What if I only look at the nuts and the bolts and like the, the deal as it is on paper, right? Like Mm. think of an RFP, right? Oh, we checked all the boxes. We filled out all this stuff. Like on paper, this looks great. How successful is that sales effort versus the one who builds a real relationship, who understands why and the political dynamics and the personal dynamics and, and the emotion behind the deal and the opportunity? Who's going to win? Mm-hmm. So, I'm pretty sure those two ideas are very, very closely connected. They're the same idea. If I manage the human, the whole human, I'm going to get a better result. If I manage the relationships and the, the bigger picture of the deal versus just the, the, the presentation and the proposal and the ROI calculator, I'm going to get better results. I'm going to win more. We win human to human. I mean, that's all this boils down to. Freedom and humans. So here, here's my question for you. Why are more people not doing that? <laughs> Why is that so hard? <laughs> like, that, that's the thing. It's like what you're speaking to is like, be a human. Feel your heart. You know what? Feel their heart. It's because like, it's messy. What's, what's the issue? It's messy, right? Can I? It's hard to document. I can't put it in a spreadsheet. It's squishy. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and maybe it's not obvious. I mean, maybe, maybe this, this conversation inspires somebody to go, Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. Yep. I've been doing this wrong. I'm missing a huge opportunity. And, and the mm-hmm. way I always feel about these conversations is if, if this conversation, if you and I can impact one person, this was totally worth it. Mm. So hopefully I get to hear from that person. <laughs> right like we tell me scott, hey scott i heard you i not like not i didn't just listen like i heard you and i'm changing yeah. something because of it and everybody's going to be happier and you're going to get better results mm-hmm. one of the reasons why i think it's it's also hard is because it requires people to look in the mirror yeah and look at themselves because it's really scary to like Actually, go and feel the emotions of somebody else also requires you to go in and feel the emotions of yourself, of you as a sales professional, as you as a leader. And there's some nuances and some scariness and there's fear yeah. doing that because, hey, if I'm trying to like really connect with you, I understand what, what's struggling. It's like if I have to be willing to go on that journey with myself in order for me to be impactful at yep. it. Yeah, because you can't get there without trust. Like there, there yes. has to be some transparency there because if you're an automaton of a leader, why would I tell you that stuff? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You're like, yeah. beep, beep, beep. At, I need to know this information. I'm like, you don't care. I need to know that you freaking care about this. Mm-hmm. See, again, mm-hmm. same thing with our customers. If I know that you care about the outcome and not that, that you don't just care that I buy you just need to buy. Well, that's really all you care about. Okay, well, this isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It goes back to what you were saying earlier. It's like three things you need to believe in. One of them is what you sell. And when you say what you sell, is like, are you actually helping your customers? Yep. Mm. I mean, I could talk about this for a long, <laughs> long period of time. And I'm also, I also feel like we're scratching the surface of, of what we could do. I guess I have one... I have two questions for you. One of the questions is simply, how would you summarize this? Like we, we've talked about a lot of really good stuff right here about being a, you know, a top seller, about corporations around leadership. Like how would you kind of really put that into a, this is what we're talking about here. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the, if we just look at the really big themes, it's belief, it's trust, it's freedom and, and creating freedom. That, that, and it's human. Yeah. That's all, that's all this is, right? Is, is I, I'm not saying your numbers don't matter. I'm not saying you have to never look at a spreadsheet again. 
what I am saying is there's a lot more to it mm. and, and mm. relationships matter and humans matter. And I mean, I, I, I love, and am so excited about the possibility uh, represented by AI. I mean, there, there's a reason I've been in technology my entire life, but at the end of the day, it's humans that use that technology. And ideally it's humans who benefit from, from that technology. It all comes back to the human. Mm -hmm. mm. So I have one, one final question here for you, but before I, I ask a question, I do just want to just acknowledge you of just, I love not only the amount of passion that comes through in what you're speaking to and your wisdom around it. I think it's also really inspiring for so many people to see that, hey, you're still in the game. You still have a bag. And to also at the same time to be throwing a summit, to be having podcasts, to be writing a book. You know, it's, it says there's not really an excuse here, y'all, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's powerful. And also the, the message that you promote, that you share, it's like, Hey, yes, still become better at the craft. This is so important. Become yes. better at the craft. Let's not discount that. Yep. Become better at, as a sales professional, as someone who enrolls people and make sure you're actually tapping into who you truly are. Cause that's when you become good. You're not, you don't need to sound like somebody else or do like, There's value in learning from those people, but don't forget it's you and the unique expression of you that's so important. So I just acknowledge you for not just embodying that yourself, but also for promoting that message to support others in doing that too. Yeah. I, pr I appreciate you, you saying that, right? It, at, at the end of the day, it's, it, it's my superpower, right? It, it's being able to share what's real for me, like my own stories, but also telling the stories of others, right? This is, this is a lot of collective wisdom and, and knowledge. I mean, be, before I started this show and, and this community, I had heard the Jim Rohn quote that says you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, like I, dozens of times. And I believed it, but I didn't ever actually do something about it. And this, you know, it's, uh, when, when I boil down like my why it comes to inspiration squared. I love to be around people who inspire me. I love to hear those inspirational stories, but I also want to be somebody who inspires others. And mm -hmm. that, that is my virtuous cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Those things feed on each other. Right. And, and that being intentional of, I want to surround myself with the best people out there because I, I want to be like them. I want to learn from them. And, and now they're all my friends. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so my last question for you is this, the show is called the rising leader podcast. What do you view as the rising leader? To me, leadership is about service. And, and so, you know, being that rising leader is, is rising and stepping into service and, and taking care of your team. And, you know, with, with that is, is, is managing up, right. Is, is serving your leaders. Like when you're a leader, you have leaders. So it's, it's, it's being a true servant leader. Mm. Hell yeah being a true servant leader and letting that cape show. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Put it on fly. Hell yeah. Well, Scott, let me ask you this question uh, as a final one. If people want to follow you, get in contact with you, just learn more about you or the work you're doing, what is the best way to do so? Yeah, go to top1.fm. So T-O-P, the number one dot FM. You'll find all the stuff from there. If you want to collect, connect on LinkedIn, you want to uh, subscribe to a couple of podcasts, you want to check out the summit, uh, it's it's all there, top1.fm. Alex, thanks for, thanks for having me. This has been a, a great conversation. You got me thinking about some stuff. Maybe, maybe I've even inspired my, myself a little bit. I got some more to think about. <laughs> I love it. Well, you've done the same for me. And for all those listeners who dropped in, thank you as always for being here. And if you know somebody, and I know you do, who needs to hear this podcast, send this to them so they can get up-leveled like you. And Scott, 
once again thank you brother thanks for listening to the rising leader podcast make sure you hit that follow button so you get notified every time a new episode releases if you know someone who wants to take their lives and their career to the next level send them this episode so we can all rise together for more information check out alluvians.co we'll see you next time and in the meantime keep letting it flow